The former president of Malawi, Her Excellency Dr. Joyce Banda, arrived in Zimbabwe for a special Mother's Day tour and groundbreaking ceremony for various community projects in Wange at Musuna Village. The projects are being spearheaded by the Southern African Development Initiators in partnership with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Trade Development, Environmental Management Agency, EMMA, the Rural District Council, Moonlight Funeral Services, Stonewealth and Longju Investments. Her Excellency Dr. Joyce Banda was accompanied by the Ambassador of Malawi to Zimbabwe, His Excellency Mr. Pole Pole, and the Minister of State, and devolution for Matabilele North Province, Honorable Richard Moyo, and they were welcomed by Chief Wange. Welcome to this special current affairs programming from ZBC News. My name is Zandi Lenzlovo, your host. And as we did mention uh, in the preamble, we are going to be speaking to a very special lady visiting us uh, right here in our beautiful country, Zimbabwe. Now, she is known as a mother, a passionate philanthropist, and has also attained one of the highest offices in the land, being a president of Malawi. We're speaking today to the former president, Her Excellency, Dr. Joyce Banda, today and we're so appreciative having her join us here in Zimbabwe. Good Morning. to see you. Thank you. Madama, you. you have an amazing story and a, an amazing legacy that you have created for women, not only just for yourself and for your family, but for women at large. What would you like to uh, that Zimbabweans should take away, uh, you know, in terms of your legacy across the globe? To start with, let me wish all Malawian, I mean Malawian and Zimbabwean mothers a belated Happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I think that there's so much that we can do. But I think the first thing we must do as the Zimbabwean women, Malawian women, Zambian women, is the fact that we are leaders before colonization. We were leading our nations before the white man came. Mm. And Ghana is a very good example. In fact, the, the woman, uh, Queen Asentawa, who refused colonization, who fought the white people, was an African woman. Mm -hmm. She was even uh, sent away. She ended up living in exile until she died. Even in my own country, Namlangen, who was a, a warrior, she was the, when the Portuguese came and were demarcating her land. She went to fight and they slaughtered her there. Mm -hmm. So we, ha we were leaders before. In fact, if you research, you will find that they will say that uh, um, it was colonization that delayed us. Well, some of those that colonized us didn't have women in their structures back home, so they didn't know what to do with us. Mm -hmm. But you know what we did? When our brothers, um, Robert Mugabe, uh, Julius Nyerere, Kamus Banda, Yomu Kenyatta, Kwame Nkrumah, Nelson Mandela, started fighting for safe rule, our well, women rose to the occasion. So we have uh, dynamic, strong women across the continent who stood up and sacrificed the women like uh, Winnie Mandela and uh, Bettina Sisulu and, uh, and uh, I mean, Joyce Mujuru and uh, Rose Chivambo in Malawi across the, across the continent. I mean, m my own sister, Opa Chunguri. Mm -hmm. Yes, women who, when you ask what was going through your mind for you to leave home and go in the bush, mm -hmm. that determination shows that we are made of steel. And therefore, we what I can say about us is that we must insist on following our culture and tradition. We, we must do what we are doing right. Because we are doing right, I say that, mm -hmm. because we have six presidents, women who have been presidents on the continent of Africa, six. America is trying, still trying to get one mm. in two state house. So there must be something African women and men are doing right that the rest of the world can learn from. In fact, the country with the highest number of women in parliament is on the continent of Africa, is one in the world. Mm -hmm. So we must pat ourselves on the back while acknowledging that there's still too much work ahead of us. We as women to uplift ourselves, to emancipate women, there's a lot of work, but we must also recognize that we're not bad, we're doing fine. 
and we must stand tall and proud. But you know what? Our, uh, the, 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 the style, the method for us to achieve gender equality is not by fighting our men. We will lose it before we start. Oh, yes. I have always told the world that I'm a feminist. But I'm, a f I'm an African feminist. Mm -hmm. I, I realize that in my on my continent, the kind of man I'm dealing with, if I confront him, if I intimidate him, if I'm rude to him, I will lose the fight. Oh, yes. So I have succeeded even at household level. When I got married to Richard Banda, he was already a high court judge. I wasn't. I didn't say, come down here and be equal to me. I found my way up. So that's what Af African women should do. One step at a time, one yes. step at a time. So that when you get there and you are rec demanding for equal opportunity, there's no argument on the other side. They will realize that no, well, on merit, I mean, she's ready. That's what we should be fighting for. So how do you achieve that? By engaging our men, by talking to them, by m realizing that if we are confrontational, we shall lose it. There are so many presidents now ac across the continent of Africa who are achieving parity. Even African Union is 50-50. Tell me, did we fight our men? No. Did we march on the street? We engaged them. They acknowledged that we are here. And so we cannot be ignored. Just by being, just by being the best that we can be, they will see, they will realize that there's no way I'm going to ignore this person. Because she has the, the she has the constituents. In my case, when I became running mate president Bingo Mtarik, he I was a grassroots woman running and everybody knew in Malawi that if they align with me, they'll get the woman's vote. Oh, yes. So we must build ourselves, our capacity, position ourselves in such a way that we cannot be ignored. But to be confrontational, to shout at our leaders, to, to, to give us equal right, it, it won't come. It won't work. It won't work. And we, what we must remember is that doing it the other way, we have succeeded better than the most developed nations on our earth. Yeah, I, I mean, I say that with proudly in America. I say, well, so when you see yourselves and me, who is ahead? Because you just got a, the first vice president the other day and you were celebrating. I mean, where I come from, vice president at Tuepene. I was vice president 12 years ago. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Her Excellency Dr. Joyce Banda's tour took her to Musuna village, which is situated 79 kilometers from Wange town, right on the Zambezi River with Zambia a stone throw away. This remote village grabbed the attention of the Southern African Development Initiators and was selected as the pilot project for the Smart Rural Cities program. The Minister of State and Devolution for Matibele North Province, Honorable Richard Moyo, spoke on the development before introducing Dr. Banda. The groundbreaking ceremony aims to initiate and open fundraising platform to facilitate the construction of fish ponds and put in place irrigation system. The work has already begun. The project has already made a lot of uh, headway. The true result and benefits of which will be seen in the years to come. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the team and the government of Zimbabwe for this initiative and their continued dedication to bring development to Musuna village. I was uh, married by age 21, beaten up, abused. In 1981, I packed my bags with my th th three, three children and left. But I made up my mind that for as long as I live, I shall never stand by and watch another woman be abused if I can help it. So what, I am, what am I saying to my fellow women present here? Until and unless at household level you make a contribution, you do something, you hustle around, you contribute towards the household, usually you don't get respect. That is why Sadi is coming to this area. So as I'm speaking to you now, I formed an organization called the National Association of Business Women in 1989 that reached 50,000 women across the country. I spent most of my adult life providing business opportunities to my fellow women, but I realized that urban women have opportunities. 
So I focus more on rural women. And we shall rise, we shall rise, hold hands, and help our governments to do our little bit to tr transform our rural sector. What I've done in Malawi is uh, my president, I'm grateful to President Chakwera, he has created space, just like President Mnangagwa, because if he didn't create space, he could not have welcomed me, the minister wouldn't be sitting here. We have, uh, we, those of us in the civil society, must therefore take advantage of that opportunity. We must not confront or we must not antagonize governments that are standing with us to do our bit. But I also want to say, there are so many organizations around the globe with lots of resources at their disposal. So when I was president, what I did is provide training. When they leave school, send them to nursing school and make them sign that when they finish that course, they are coming back home. When they finish that course, they are coming back home. So maybe study, as you begin to look at the health status of this area, find girls that are committed to go to school, sponsoring for a nursing course. It's not difficult, it's not rocket science. These people who have benefited from Zimbabwe for ages should be able to train even 50 students. In my case, Joyce Banda Foundation alone trained 50. And then I got a lady from U UK who trained 100. So when we open a clinic in a place like this, we know we have nurses as well. In a place like this, you don't want children that are malnourished. In Malawi, we feed th the Joyce Banda Foundation feeds 20,000 children a day. But the food is provided by our partners. So may I ask Sadi that today, beginning tomorrow, you go looking around for partners that can provide food, because they can. After addressing the audience, Dr. Banda performed the groundbreaking ceremony. Now, as part of her philanthropic work, Dr. Banda identified a young Form 3 student, Blessings, who was born with underdeveloped arms and one leg. Her wish was to get an artificial leg and wheelchair, which saw Dr. Banda and the Southern Africa Development Initiators Executive Board member, Mr. Mslanga, pledge to acquire these for her. She's famous today. Oh, fantastic. What's your name, my darling? Blessings. 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 How do you feel uh, talking to the pres former president of Malawi? Mm? You feel good? Yeah. Mm? 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 Thank you so much. I was just asking her what, what it means to meet you and also what it means to be a, a, a recipient of a wheelchair. How is it going to impact her in her life? So she was just responding to that. Because in Malaya, I've started a mentoring program. So right now I think I've got a hundred. I meet the women, I talk to them, personal development, uh, the future. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is, I'm just find another mentee. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> During her tour of Zimbabwe, Dr. Joyce Banda visited the majestic Victoria Falls and expressed her delight at having seen them again after a memorable experience at the rainforest. It's a great honor that I have had the opportunity to come here several times, several times in my 72 years. But every time I come to Victoria Falls, it's not possible for me not to come because this is one of the wonders of the world. And for me, I'm truly excited as an African that this is on our continent, this wonder. And uh, I just hope that the world will continue to marvel and come and see this God's creation. Dr. Banda's delegation was equally impressed by the world's wonder. To have an, op an opportunity to be here today, to see it with my eyes and experience uh, the Victoria Falls by myself physically is something that uh, will live uh, in me and uh, it's some good news that we'll, go, we'll take back home. It has to be uh, named as the pride of Africa. This place uh, is uh, something that uh, no man uh, resources uh, permitting 
should not allow in their lifetime not to come and have an experience. We continued our conversation with Dr. Banda and I inquired if she was still very politically active and this is what she had to say. So Joyce Banda is back on the development platform. Okay. What happened is uh, I've been on the development platform for 40 years. So the, the political life that you know is yes. 10 years. Oh, all right. So it's like you're on the main road, you take a detour, and you come back. To the I am I'm, I'm heading that party, but mm -hmm. that party has got a succession plan. So the, we are in the midst of um, our succession plan. Mm -hmm. Somebody younger must take over for me. The, the current president mm -hmm. and I were campaigning in 2019 mm -hmm. to go to State House. I had already presented my nomination papers and paid. Wow. Okay. When the president then said, why don't you step aside? Oh, You're older nice. than me, man. Let's work together. Let's work together. Yeah, so support me. And then when I went out and told my followers, you know that for me, my constituency is the rural, the rural people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are the ones I love. I love yeah. to work with. I've always told you people that leadership is a love affair. Oh, yes. You must fall in love with the people, and the people must fall in love with, with you, with the you. people yourself. Oh, so for me, it's rural people. So they wanted to know, what is it that you, you are going to do mm -hmm. when you step aside? Oh, yeah. So I promised Malawians and my president, yes. if you win and you go to state, I'll help you. I've, I've withdrawn. I even had to withdraw publicly. Mm -hmm. Because I, I was going to, if I delayed two weeks, I was going to be on the ballot paper. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so I, I, I made aside. an announcement and I stepped aside and I told them, that uh, I can, uh, uh, I will go back mm -hmm. to rural areas and continue with my work. Oh, okay. So, that's so that's how I help my president and my country is to do what I used to do because I know how to do that. Oh, yeah, that's good. well. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Good. Because now with an international network that I have, it's even much easier. Oh, okay. No, so now, good. right now, I'm I, I'm heading an organization that I formed when the president won which is uh, an NGO, oh, okay. a community development initiative, mm. that is now implementing what I'm calling smart villages. Oh, okay. And uh, in this project, we are building 2,800 houses. Wow. Awesome. 2,800 families um, with an integrated program, taking a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. I ultra believe that when you get into an area, mm -hmm. you must give all the needs. You must address them. Mm -hmm. So in this smart village, what mm -hmm. we have is electricity. We must have environmental management. Oh, wow. We must have clean water. Mm -hmm. We must have food and nutrition security. So mm -hmm. they must grow enough food. Oh, good. Uh, then they must have microfinance, mm -hmm. agribusiness, mm -hmm. wow. clean water, Amazing. a school, mm -hmm. a clinic, mm -hmm. and a church or a mosque. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, that, that, yeah. that's powerful. I haven't had the opportunity mm -hmm. to look closely at what Zimbabwe is doing, mm -hmm. all I can say is what I can see. Mm -hmm. The first thing that caught my eye is mm -hmm. I get out of the plane and there's a new park. There's so much work at the, at the airport. At the airport, all oh, right. It, it, those, are very, it, it, those are striking issues for a, a visitor who is coming in a country for the first time. Oh, yeah. So I see, I see a new park and I see beautiful roads. Wow. And I see a beautiful country. Wow. And I see smiling people. Oh, so good. for me, that's, that's, that's what matters. Oh, okay, but you know good. our presidents have been saying, yes, we must have uh, uh, political diplomacy, mm -hmm. but what is important is economic diplomacy. Oh, yes. We used to be one country one time. We used to have one, one, one head of state. Oh, yes. And the, the president yesterday was reminding me that, in fact, he used to live in this house. Wow. Yeah, so at the back of my mind, yes. It is the borders we have, mm -hmm. but what I've seen in the villages here, the challenges for our rural people are the same. Are the same, yeah. yeah right. So what we can do is work together. True. Find out what is it that we can do together. Together. Mm -hmm. I mean, we grow very beautiful rice in Malawi. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know about Malawi I love rice? The rice. Yes. yes, but nice. all the fruits that we eat, the oranges, the apples, the what, we get them from Zimbabwe. So there's so much that even at local level, people can do together. Oh, yeah, that's uh, true. Yes. That's, Make, that's, that's, that's very true. You, you, we don't eat politics. We eat food. So that is what we can do. And the rest mm -hmm. of us, 
must help our governments to transform oh, our economies, oh, to transform the lives of the people at grassroots. Amazing. And let po leave politics to those who uh, 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 in poli uh, political <laughs> positions. Yeah, right. Yes, That's yes. Amazing. If each and of us, a whole generation that worries me, a whole generation will sit there and say, no, but the president is not doing enough for me. And then the minister is not doing enough for me. They are not going to come to your house and transform your life. Mm -hmm. That was my upbringing. Oh, this, wow. le, this age group, mm -hmm. that's what we believe. Wow. We went to yes. earn to live a good life. As we are bringing this particular show to a close, maybe your parting words, especially to the women parliamentarians. You, I've had the opportunity of uh, driving with you in, as part of your convoy, this particular uh, Mother's Day special a weekend. And I saw you grassrootsly talking to some of the women on the ground in the villages. What would you like for them to know when it comes to engaging the people on the ground so that they, so that they get to get the feel of what is really required on the ground? Yeah, but maybe let me confess that, um, as I said earlier, I was telling uh, uh, somebody today that um, leadership is a love affair. Mm -hmm. You must fall in love with the people yourself, and the people must fall in love with you, said Joyce Band of Malak. Yes. If you go anywhere, you see that quote, they'll it's put you. my name, yeah, it's me. What do I mean? I mean that you, there's a difference between somebody who has fallen in love with that constituency the people that you have chosen to serve, mm -hmm. and that, the one that just find them, themselves there, maybe because of the power or the money, whatever, brought in the, them there. Mm -hmm. So for me, those who really sat down and decided, I'm going to go and compete to get a constituency. I am going to do this to serve the people, because I love them. There's a difference when you get there. So for me, when you took me to Hangi, I was at home. Remember how we ate this oh, the yes. traditional sima there? It was so good. Because that's where I belong. <laughs> <laughs> if you told me to sleep there, I would sleep, sleep there. there. <laughs> that's where I belong. Yeah, so uh, I think it's very important for us to be honest with ourselves. <laughs> you can be an engineer or you can be a teacher or you can be anything. Stay there if you have no love for the people. Mm -hmm. But the people at grassroots right now, the challenges I saw in Wange, that women are facing there. The next hospital is 21 kilometers away. Mm -hmm. As similar to Malawi, as similar to Zambia, <coughs> as similar across Africa. Women have challenges and they need us. Those of us who claim to have made it in life, those of us who are lucky that we have made, we have achieved so much, we must give back. Our governments must, there must be political ways to transform the lives of the people. But governments alone, across Africa, cannot do it alone. Even in America, they are poor people. So those of us who have been fortunate to make it, we must rise and support our governments. Do the little that we can. Right now, there's so much money across the world for development work, for civil society, for NGOs, for women's organizations. Bring that money into Zimbabwe, bring that money into Malawi. Just two weeks ago, I was laying a foundation stone for a hospital where women, the next maternity wing is 73 kilometers. Mm. Those Oof. in Wanga are even better off. Mm. Yeah, so that's, that's what the challenges they are, our women are facing at grassroots. Absolutely. Is it not our moral responsibility to do something about that situation when God has given you the opportunity to rise to this level? So for me, what really makes me tick is that I have been fortunate that the issues I have championed mm -hmm. originated from personal experience. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much. We are so grateful uh, that we have had the opportunity to have this wonderful meeting and interview with the Her Excellency, uh, that's uh, Dr. Joyce Vanda. We wish you well. Thank you so much for visiting our beautiful country. And I know all Zimbabweans, we send our love to Malawi and to Thank your you. family. Thank you for Thank being you with us today. My you. name is Andy Lindlevo. Thank you so much for joining us right here on ZBC, a current affairs this is a special program for you this evening. Good evening, everyone.